everybody. Good afternoon. Hopefully everybody is still awake. We're almost done. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, most of you know about Hypothesis. Uh, I have the lovely job of being the product manager and also managing the engineering team at Hypothesis. And so I'm just going to give you a quick update of kind of what we've been up to since the last year and where we're going. Um, for those of you that don't know about Hypothesis, we were started seven years ago by that guy sitting over there in the blue shirt, Dan. Uh, <laughs> and um, Dan had a vision uh, to bring open interoperable conversation layers um, over all of the knowledge that's published on the web. Um, and I would say that in the seven years that we've existed, we have done various bits with various words of, of this vision over time. Um, when I first came on board and saw this vision, I was like, great, but what do those words mean? Um, and so I actually worked with Dan to define them because I thought, well, something that's in his head often needs to come out and be put on paper. And so really what those words mean to us are kind of laid out right here, really. Um, and, and we worked over time in various areas of this vision. Um, open means to us that anybody can use and modify our code. And in fact, you've seen many projects here where they've used our code base and, and done their own really cool thing with it. And we're very excited to see that. Interoperable means that the client and the service are separate components. This is something that we have worked at very recently over the past couple of years, um, really hard at because our, they weren't um, completely separate and we've gotten a lot better at that. Um, it also means that um, multiple clients are able to talk to one service and, and multiple services are talking to our client. We are getting there slowly but surely. Um, conversation, um, machines or humans annotating sections of documents on the web. We have um, Cybot, which is a really great example of a machine that annotates in an automated way any RRID on scientific publications and has generated hundreds of thousands of annotations. Um, layers, providing many layers of annotations coming from many communities and services. This is something that we've done recently in the last year, especially with our group's work over all of the knowledge, um, building something that works across the web on any document or media type in any browser with any device. We are getting better at it slowly, but it, we are still working towards it. So the key assumptions that we kind of work with at Hypothesis, um, and as a scientist, as a former scientist, I can say we always work with assumptions when we make our hypotheses. Um, <laughs> I was a microbiologist for four years. I can, I can confidently say that. So uh, the key assumptions that we're working with is that, and, and you kind of heard this in Gardner's talk and many other talks, is that conversation and analysis and review and note taking are really some of the most fundamental forms of communication um, that we have and forms of private re reflection too. And that up until now, our ability to do that on the web has been incredibly limited and annotation has really opened that up. Um, we want to open up the world's content to a powerful and rich um, interaction, much like it is in, in person. Um, and then we are thinking that there are trillions of documents published on the web and that over time there's gonna have, we're gonna have trillions of annotations made on those trillions of documents to help really engage people in conversation on the web. Our basic strategy that we've kind of walk through um, from top to bottom is really developing the basic ar architecture, creating an open source reference implementation for the client and the platform. We've done that really well, getting the standard formalized at the W3C, which has also been accomplished, launching the service based on an open platform and standard, evolving the client, which we always continue to do. And um, uh, Rob Knight, who is not here, but as our lead developer on the client is doing fantastic jobs with that. Um, moving beyond the monolithic client and service, this is something that we have talked about a lot recently as a team of how do we get there and what are the steps to get there. Um, and then integrating the annotation widely into diverse platforms. This is actually what we focused a core part of our work on, product work on over the last year and a half really. So when I first came on and uh, as any sort of first time external product manager coming on to an, a new team will tell you, you have to really get into your CEO's head and say, okay, what's in your head? I need to be, I need it to be on paper <laughs> so that we can actually achieve that vision. And so um, I worked with Dan to come up with these sort of six product strategy themes so that we knew that all of the work we were doing was 
focused on one of these areas. And over time, we focused on some of the areas and not some of the others, and we've kind of picked buckets. But everything that we do is really geared towards these six different product areas of achieving wide format coverage, completing the browser support, integrating everywhere, being frictionless so that the user experience is easy. We've gotten better at that. We need to get better at that. Um, building a federated architecture and supporting community. So we have sort of picked from these various buckets in, in the three years that I've been here. And we're gonna keep on you know, honing this uh, strategy, but this has kind of stayed for, for a while. So what we've accomplished recently, we have a very small but very dedicated engineering uh, team and product team that's just worked really hard over the last year. Um, at the first part of last year, like many other companies, we were mired in the GP GDPR work, which was so hard but so necessary to meet the EU's new privacy standards. Um, so we now have fully encrypted data at rest and in transit, yes, but that was so much time and effort to put into that. Um, we have updated terms of service and privacy policies too, which are all on our website and you can check them out. Um, open and restricted groups. So this was really a push to expand beyond private groups um, because that was t uh, technically the only group that you had available to you. So what we did was create, based on publisher feedback and other feedback, we created world readable, world writable groups and world readable group member only writable groups um, that can be scoped to specific pages, origins, or path. Um, and so we have kind of worked over time to expand our groups model. We are doing the little last piece of work right now on it. Um, and I think it's gonna be complete for a while, but we will continue to expand it so that people have kind of more ways of annotating and sharing information. Um, LMS was a big project for us starting in January of this year. As Jeremy kind of mentioned, um, we had a really great prototype at, that had been flo um, floating out there in the ether thanks to John Udell and the work he did. And based on that app and the feedback that we got, we actually had a really good idea of what it is we needed to build in the core sort of robust app. And so the first thing we did is build uh, a seamless transition between the LMS and Hypothesis such that LMS users don't have to authenticate when they come into um, Hypothesis. They automatically have their groups created for them. And so students were no longer wondering, how do I get to my group to annotate my group? And Steele is nodding his head back there because he was asking for that the most, probably out of anybody in this room. Um, users, uh, I just said that one, are automatically created to private groups. And then the design work for our next sort of phase of LMS work has actually started, um, which is the gradebook in a, in a piece which allows teachers to actually grade the annotations that students are making. Um, and then the activity views piece, which um, teachers can see the students' annotations by document or across the course. And so that's something that we're designing out right now. Liza Gardner, who is our senior developer on the API side, has done fantastic work um, really making our API more robust in recent, um, recent history, time. Uh, and, um, and so we now have a, a versioned API. That's something that we never actually had before. So if you consume our API, um, that's something new to look to. We have improved documentation on the API. Um, more powerful queries that a lot of publishers specifically were asking for, but general users as well. So you can query now based on domains, wildcards, and other elements. We had a, a blog post go up about that. Um, and then we have added features to support the provisioning of users and groups through our API as well. So our upcoming work, as uh, Jeremy kind of mentioned yesterday, our focus is like solely on education moving forward. That little last bit of groups work that I talked about is gonna be closed out here relatively soon, um, where we're gonna enhance, push out some group menu enhancements, um, which I'll show you in a little bit, and then broader community group support as well. But our focus, at least for the next six months coming up, is really focused on making the LMS app a robust app that gives teachers and students all of the things that they need to have effective conversations in the classroom, effective dialogue, and then effective grading of that dialogue. Um, so what that means is um, uh, an LMS-capable activity views, scoped keys for LMS users if they need it, 
um, a great book priest, the ability for teachers to create private groups so they can have sort of very um, focused discussion layers, and then notifications so that teachers get notified when students make annotations on their documents, which is not possible today. And there's other stuff that's not on this list um, that we're gonna focus on, but this is just a start. And so that's really for the next, sort of the rest of the year, that's really, I think, where we're gonna be focused on. And we're very excited about it. Um, it's, it's a very exciting time at Hypothesis because we get to really just kind of um, hone in on one thing and, and knock it out really well. For the longer term, these are features that folks have asked us for. You got, uh, you've been really patient. For those of you that have asked for things that are still on this list, um, uh, we will deliver them eventually. I don't know when, uh, but we'll get around to delivering them. Things like multicolored highlights. Somebody asked me for that just yesterday because they saw the science in the classroom thing and they were like, can you do that? And I was like, no, you can't. That's a custom thing. Um, Multi-service, um, I talked to you about the fact that that's something that we're actively thinking about. We've had two um, developer conversations about it in the last six months. Um, one in our in-person team in Brighton and one just actually two days ago, um, again in person. Um, third party, we want third party users to be, to have all of the full rights as first party users. So giving third party users the ability to view their activity and the ability to create private groups is something that's super important. Accessibility, so if you go to where our roadmap is, it's actually linked in the, a couple of slides. Um, in that repo is also an accessibility roadmap because we know what we need to do to make the client accessible, we just have to do the work to do it. Um, and accessibility is super important as we march forward into the education space. Um, social features, um, having a like button, at mentions, following, these are all things that we're calling our social kits and so we're sort of gathering information as we um, for the things that we need to build, and we will be um, thinking about that in the near future. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but that's kind of what's been percolating around and we have on our radar. Um, future UX enhancements, so um, something that's kind of hot off the design presses and really actually is currently in development. This is kind of the way that the group scope menu looks right now, where you have the ability to sort of do two things, um, view group activity and invite others and leave your group. Um, we got a lot of complaints in about the fact that the spacing between this was way too tight and people were accidentally clicking the wrong thing. Um, and uh, we've now fixed that, or are in the process of fixing that. We have a, a designer on our team, Jared, who's from Hawaii, who's not here, um, but he's done some great work where uh, it's now going to be an accordion style menu that drops down and gives you the group, uh, the ability to do different things with the group, like viewing the group activity, copying the invite link or leaving the group, um, which is not shown here, but is there. So we are going to continue to make design enhancements because we wanna make sure that this product is easy for everybody to use um, wherever they're using it. So I said the hypothesis public roadmap, it, it used to live on Trello, it now lives on GitHub because we actually do all of our project management on GitHub. Somebody is like really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't think that would make you that happy, Randall, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do all of our project management on GitHub because we find as a remote team, it just works really well for us. Um, and so you can go to that link and it's um, completely public. It doesn't have every single small issue that we're working on, especially like bug fixes. I mean, if you really wanna know that your bug got fixed, email support and we'll let you know. Um, but it does have sort of the higher goal, longer term picture things, high level things um, on here. And if you don't see something on here, just feel free to email us and we'll tell you where it is. Um, I wanna shout out the Hypothesis team. Uh, we have a very small team, we're 12 people and some of us are here, some of us are not. But every single person on this team is committed to the mission and the vision and are just really kind to people and I'm grateful to work with them. So thank you so much to Ben and thank you to everyone for listening. I appreciate it. Questions for Arthi. Afterwards. <laughs> this will be a good one. It's okay. a good question. It's not about my specific thing. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that guy. My question actually is about um, your team and how you'd like to receive contributions mm -hmm. specifically. So um, there are lots of people that 
produce issues and make demands of you, and you have a very clear roadmap and lots of ideas. For people that are thinking about contributing or making their own, making pull requests or mm -hmm. improving the software or having it do some other thing, what advice do you have as the product manager for how we can do a better job of doing that or become healthier contributors to your project? Yeah, our, I will tell you that our engineering team debates this a lot because we, ha we do get a lot of contributions in from the community. We often aren't able to review those contributions in a timely manner and then people get frustrated. Um, we have a product roadmap that's very tight <laughs> on terms of what, what it is we have to deliver and when we want to deliver it by. And we have just this team that you see here. And so it's very difficult, I will tell you right now, um, if, you're, if you want to contribute something, for it to get reviewed. But I would say that if you are keen on contributing something, work directly with a developer. Um, contact them on our public channel. So we have a Slack channel that's public um, that I think somebody will link to if it's not already linked to somewhere. Um, contact them directly um, and ask them kind of, you know, what are the standards? So we have pretty high standards at Hypothesis for our code base. Um, we have a very stringent peer, re peer review process, um, and we uh, uphold those standards for anybody that's contributing to that code base. Um, so I would say if you're really keen on it, just contact a developer directly. Sorry. Looks like there might be like a tornado. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Um, it I, Bang. Well, said it would just be thunderstorms. No, but she's yeah. watching this cloud for like a few minutes now. Okay. Just, <laughs> just went back up. I'll go check with the uh, folks in the building well, great, and come everybody. back. everybody. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. <laughs> <laughs>